welcome, welcome to Movie, movie bitches. bitches, Sundance Part 2! We had too much that we just had to break it up. So cool. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> don't eat cookies, they've gone to your head. I guess, and the wine had nothing to do with it. Altitude, it goes too quicker. Is that why the laws in Utah are so strict? No, it's because they're Mormon. But that would be interesting. But, PSA. PS? In, no, PSA, public service announcement. In Utah, chartreuse counts as a flavoring, so they don't measure it. So you can get trashed. Even though it has more alcohol than every other alcohol. So you can have like a gin and chartreuse, and they're like, equal parts, bitch, woo! It's a good thing to know. So the next movie we watched was Damsel, uh, which was a bummer too, because, so this was the directing, writing brothers. brothers. Zellner brothers. Yep, who did a movie that we saw a year or two ago mm. at Sundance called Kumiko the Bounty Hunter. The Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter. Pretty and pretty it's like this whole thing where she watches um, this copy of Fargo over and over and over yeah. again and becomes convinced that there is... The money is actually buried. It's so funny how much sort of meta, meta, meta-ness Fargo has yeah. spawned. That's true. It's crazy. But so she comes convinced that the, the treasure and the money is actually there. Right. And she like saves up her money and goes to Minnesota and like tracks it down and whatever. It's, it's good. It was fun and interesting and different than a lot of things. I seen. liked it. Yeah. So this is their follow-up. Yes. Um... It's terrible. I didn't like it. I wasn't enraged by it. I was. You were. I thought it was just kind of bleh. Like, I just went, meh. So, Robert Pattinson and... Best part of this movie. Robert Pattinson's outfits. The fact that we just said that Robert Pattinson slash his outfits was the best part of this movie tells you everything. You know, I... No, I'm, I'm fine. It's fine. He's I fine. I don't mind Robert Pattinson. I don't I think care. I do either. The structure of the movie is very bizarre. Um, basically, they wanted to make an absurdist Western, yeah. um, but it was just sort of absurd for the sake of it. It really was. And it didn't... It didn't go far enough to the point where it was like absurd... Exactly. ...craziness. It was just sort of like mild absurdity and so everything was just really frustrating because you would be like well this doesn't make any logical sense and then i'd be like well this movie's not trying to do that and then i'd be like but this doesn't make any sense and i kept going back and forth yeah but maybe it was also really boring it was very the, the editing was just really drawn out and every scene just and they i think they thought it was hilarious mm -hmm. i think they thought "Ooh, let's sit in this and leave breaks for laughter and I don't think I laughed at all. I don't think I did either. I might have chuckled. Huh. Like, that was the extent of the chuckle. When he, we see him, like, by the river looking at her locket. But the locket with the picture of her. Oh, and then he's just jerking And then off. he's just jerking off in the woods. It's like, yeah, that, that, that's what would be happening. I appreciated the candor. Right, that. right. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I think that. Yeah, I'll watch Robert Pattinson jerk off into a creek. That makes sense. The whole thing is Robert Pattinson is trying to save Mia Wojciechowska, right? It's Mia Wojciechowska. Wasikowska. Wasikowska. Um, she's been, as far as we know, she's been kidnapped by this evil person and he's gonna go save her and Marry her. brings a pastor with him on the spot and they're gonna get married. Um, and the guy- Spoiler alert. The guy who has kidnapped her gets shot in the head. While he's peeing. Oh my god. And then his big floppy fake dick. Big floppy dick. Keeps peeing. And I was like, well, this is in this movie too. What? And I was really hoping that at this point, so she comes out. And she's like, no! She's like, shoot me over this, she sees him dead. And she's like, no! And I really just wanted her to be like, to the penis. No! Like, it was so absurdly big and floppy. And it was like, what? Why'd you choose that? Well, it, 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 it was such a choice that I thought it was a choice for a reason. That it was like she was dickmatized. She was kidnapped and then got Stockholm syndrome from that dick. You know, it was. Now that's an interesting feminist western. <laughs> that did seem like that was where it should have gone. Would have been good. It would have been great. I would have loved that. Instead, it just becomes another movie where it becomes a completely different movie. Where she, it's just then her returning this pastor to the town. Well, yeah, and there's all this, For those reasons? dynamite jokes about he, he she's like, gonna like start makes a him... copper mill, and so he, she puts dynamite around his chest, so he 
doesn't get away. Doesn't but, get away. But he's always like twenty feet away from her, so, so she it's would like die too. And then, and then the Davy Crockett guy shows up and blows himself up. It was just like stupid. Like it was like little boy stupid. It was little boy stupid. It was really immature and really basic white boy dumbness. And I was just like, I don't need this. I don't need two basic bros from Texas making a movie about a damsel who's not in distress, who I doesn't mean, need that's your like, help. That's the hook. The whole time she's like, I don't need your help. I can take care of myself. I don't need your help. I'm going to punch you in the face. I, that's, you know, feminist. And it was just like, eh. No. Eh. I don't need that story. I mean, I wouldn't mind that story with like an actual thoughtful like telling Catherine of it. Catherine Bigelow directed. Yes. Feminist Western. Like, I'm cool with that. This was boring and stupid. Well, so I just felt like I was confused the whole movie. The whole movie. Um, there is a mini horse in the movie that's adorable. Um, who then was on stage for the Q&A, so we semi-met Lil Sebastian, because <laughs> it happened. It kind of wanted to be Slow West, but didn't have enough style. And the editing in Slow West was really what made it great. I agree. Um, and, and the directing. Michael Fassbender. And Michael Fassbender. And Michael Fassbender and Long John's. There was a lot more going for Slow West than but there like, was for this. I feel like they were going for similar tones. Yes. And Slow West was much more successful. Much more successful. Um, but this is basically like Robert Pattinson shows up in a dinghy off the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of Oregon. Uh, not explained where the fuck he came from. <laughs> no clue. Um, and so you're like, what? And he opens a box containing a miniature horse. Yep. And you're like, what? Which then turns out to just be a wedding gift for this woman that he's in love with. Right. And I he, mean, we don't really need to talk about this. We really it don't. It was just really drawn out, and yeah. I think um, it's not for me. No. Um, and it was just not the humor I was looking for. Robert Pattinson's clothes were tailored to a fucking T. He, um. The silhouettes. Oh, uh, yes. Like, they really nailed it. That. Absolutely. And she has this riding blanket riding coat that just drapes over the entire back of the horse with these oh lines. It looked God. like an LL Bean catalog, it was and I was just like, Fabulous. Yes, I'm living for this coat. Yes. But it was just real boring and, it was. and, and confusing. If this got a re edit and a new soundtrack and sort of got jazzed up, yeah. it could be It fun. could be better. Yeah. It could be better. So next up, we watched a documentary yeah. about Studio 54. Yeah, this was good. I liked it a lot. Um, it's basically, it took the perspective of, so there's two owners, Steve Rubell and mm -hmm. Ian Schermater. Schermer. Something like that. Schermater. Schmader. No, that's Ian wrong. Ian Schrader. Ian Schrager. Schrager. Ian Schrager. It's Ian Schrager. Not Baroness Schrader? Schrader. <laughs> Not Lee Schreiber. It's Ian Schrader. Cool. I didn't care as much about them okay. as the club. I agree. Um, it starts and it's like, we knew each other in college and we we're friends and we started this other thing and did this other thing. And I was like, I don't really give a shot. It doesn't really matter? And, I, and as much as, as hot as Ian was back in the 70s. Yes. Um, Yummy, he... beefy daddy. Well, not beefy. But he was like a yummy daddy. He yeah, was like, a yummy, yeah. a yummy 70s daddy. He, while mildly interesting, I don't think needs an entire documentary about himself. You know yeah. what I mean? He was very sort of reserved and shy and, mm -hmm. and sort of the silent partner of the, you know, right. like Steve was the real showman, right? Right, he was the flamboyant gay one. So I wish they had spent like 10 less minutes on them and 10 more minutes on like the crazy characters that would show up at Studio 54 and like, I mean, they probably just couldn't get them, but like pe more famous people talking about That's what I would have really loved. If they had gotten Liza to talk about it, if they had gotten these other people that were there all the time, apparently, I'm to sure talk about tried. it. I'm sure they tried. I'm sure they probably did. What's really cool about this movie mm -hmm. is that it talks and, and touches on and, and explores why Studio 54 was not only so successful, but also such what a beacon of exactly it represented inclusiveness of it was a safe freedom haven. it was a safe haven and that's what made it so fabulous was right. that people were just there to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do and to express themselves and be artistic and be creative and whatever and it just makes you long for that yeah and obviously they were assholes at the door that was part of the whole thing and they, right. they talked about it in the movie but like it was like this everyone got pissed if you couldn't get in right so there was judgmentality but not inside exactly once you were in you, you were, were in. in and i will say this about doing the background of the people, the two guys that did it, right. was that they explore the fact that like one of them was gay. And I right. think him Closeted. being this 
closeted-ish gay showman contributed so much to the why they developed it the way that they developed Definitely. it. Definitely, and it was interesting like why the, the, the partnership of them worked so well, and yep. why it, they made things that other people just couldn't, they exactly. saw things that people just couldn't. Yep. Totally got all of that. Yeah. I just could have used a little, a little less, less and a little, and a little more. more of like, I, there was a really short section where they were like, oh, and then Disco Sally, the 70 year old lawyer by day would show up and be fabulous at Studio 54. And I was like, give me more of this. Yes. A few more little vignettes yeah. of, of the characters yep. of Studio 54. Yep. Um, but on a whole, I really, I really did like it. I really found it really interesting yeah. and, and good. Enough time has passed that people were sort of like, it was ridiculous. Like, it was crazy. We were doing fucking crazy shit. Like, a lot of quibbles, a lot of cocaine. Lot of oh my god, so can we talk cocaine. about so Steve? So much cocaine. Steve Rebell was on so much cocaine. <laughs> he had a face for cocaine. I mean, it was just like cocaine, 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 cocaine. It was insane. And the, the walls were laced with cocaine. <laughs> We just had so much energy back then. I don't know. Just, <laughs> we finished the whole club in 36 hours. We just had so much energy. Hmm. <laughs> I was expecting the soundtrack to be even more fabulous. Yeah. I know that it's probably like their entire budget went to buying four disco tracks. It did. Um, but I, I did want a little bit more, like a few more just fabulous tracks. Yes. With pictures and whatever. That, and it did a lot of that. It did. It did. But I was like, it just wasn't. It, that was the most fun part, but I think that's why it's like, I want more of this. Yeah, it was the first club that was um, a theater. You know, yeah. It was like a performance. You know, they had... A professional lighting person come in and, and do the lights and it was all just from like, the theater too which was really cool yeah. and i think that 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 touches on so much of it because steve it seemed was so theatrical mm -hmm. in his personality and i think that's the gay part you know oh, yes. and the melding of those is what brought these celebrities it was a siren call to these these mm -hmm. fabulous creative people exactly and then all of these other people got to just be along for the ride with them yes well, and it did remind me, so like, if anyone's seen the terrible Studio 54 movie that's like PG because they cut all of the sexy scenes and all of the drugs and everything. What's the point? It's so stupid. And Mike Myers plays Steve Rebell. Oh, God. It's really weird. I also really am here for a limelight documentary. That would be fabulous. Remember when I go through, the IRS comes in and they, just, they look through all their books and da 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 they're talking about it. And it's like the whole book that's so just like the drugs. And oh, and oh, wait, we, we yeah. have to talk about my favorite part of the movie. My favorite part is just the underlining or whatever, and it says, poppers for Bianca. They didn't really get into poppers. They didn't really talk about it, because they showed it. You yeah. saw Dance for Poppers, but they didn't really talk about it. They didn't. But I love that it was just poppers for Bianca. So I would say, watch it. Yeah, it was totally, it was really, it was very good. Yeah. I really liked it. I recommend it. So another documentary that we, it's not a documentary. See, oh, it tricks you. It tricks you. <sighs> Another movie I saw was called Skate Kitchen. is about a posse of girls that are super into the skate scene in New York City. It was okay. It was very long. Again, it was like these slow, long, there's like seven to eight million, four minute, like mood montages, where it's just like, and here's her skating with these people at this time of night. And here's her skating with these people at this time. And here's her now skating with the boys. And you're, you're like, okay. Not the boys. <gasps> the boys? I would just give it that. It was, it's fine, but it's really slow. Yeah. I didn't love it. It was okay. The last movie that we watched was Bad Reputation, yeah. the Joan Jett documentary. Yeah. So it starts, and I'm like, yes, Joan Jett. Like, it's like she had just like calling from from beyond or something, she was just like, I'm gonna be a fucking famous rock musician and that is all I wanna do. And for, I mean, she lived her life, it was, mm -hmm. like, and she did it, it was great. It has this building momentum of how the Runaways came together and how it was this huge flash in the pan and, and people either hated them or loved them and, and, and it just died. And the band fell apart yeah. and how she had to just totally reinvent herself. And that was really crazy was that there was so much popularity. Right. You would think that there would be at least enough name recognition or et cetera that she'd be there. Well, she was never, there was never but the Andrew, runaways Joan Jett, you know? Andrew, she's a woman. Well, right. In an industry that is predominantly male. And I will say this, there were a few things that bothered me about this film. Well, yeah. The cinematography. Ugh. Or lack thereof. It, the interviews were very shaky and then zoom, like it was like. It was like, just lock the fucking camera it was off. It It was very like, oh no. 
we're filming today. Oh, this person's here. Wait, let me, let me, it was weird. <laughs> so that was one of the things. Yeah. The, the story in general got really muddied. Well, see, that's what I mean. So it starts, it's the runways. Yes, oh, oh she failed. Okay, Joan Jett and the Black Heart, like it's, and it's this building and, and her, the music's getting great and she's fucking fabulous. And yes. I'm just like, yes, bitch, break down those barriers. And I was like, all in. Yep. And then it was like, holy shit, what happened to this movie? Yeah. Oh no. Like it was like, a mess. It got so lost and confused in the woods. Was, I don't know. I felt like I was in the weeds. Yeah. And the other problem that I had was that a lot of the interviews are all of men talking about how she was so great. Yeah, there was a lot of that. And I was like... And when there was a woman, I was like, yes! Like when Miley Cyrus shows up. I was like, like yes! yes! And it was clear to me too, like, you could see so many different instances where Miley has been inspired and influenced by Joan. And right. so you're like, yes, this makes sense. And I would have liked a little bit more of that, like the legacy of her now on new people and like yeah. how she opened the doors and paved the way that for so many way, women to now do more. That would have been a way to end it. I agree. Because the ending is like the USO corner, the we started a new label corner, the let's uh, rape victims awareness corner, the um, vegan the corner. vegan animal activism corner, but they're all just like- Little snippets. Two minutes at most and you're like, what's this, what's this, what's this, what's yeah. going on? And then the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which yep. doesn't really culminate- Not really. In like, you know, it should have been like her, it should have transitioned at a certain point to her influences on all these people. I agree. And that would have and been And that nice. would have been, and then you can culminate that with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame too, where you're like, well, of course she deserves, I mean, of course she deserves to be there, but like, also, when you've seen how she's influenced so much throughout the course of her life, you're like, this is a, a fitting yeah. award for her, where it's like, this is a really touching moment. Yeah. Where she then gets recognized for that mark in the history book of rock and roll, which that was really cool, I thought. Yes. They cut back to a clip of her when she's young, and they're like, do you want to be famous? And she's like, I don't really want to be famous, I just want to like make my mark in this story. In rock and roll, and be remembered yeah. in the history of rock and roll. And it was like, yes. Yes, and so that was cool about, I wish it was, the movie was framed more through that vision of like, yeah. how she's left her mark. But I, it's didn't, good. I didn't hate it, and, no. I, and I would say watch it, yep. it, maybe turn it off, you know, the last half hour. Um, but it was really good, and, I, and, and the music was so good, and she's so fucking fabulous, yes. and her costumes were fabulous, and it was very just like, Fuck the man and like yes, I don't know. Like I was it was really, really energized. I was really into the first hour. I was too. And I was just like, she's fabulous. Just she's like this badass bitch, and yet she's the nicest, just down humble, to earth, humble, amazing, just night, wonderful person. And yeah. I'm just like I love you. Yes. You're fabulous. Yes. I'm also really ready for a queen documentary, like the Ooh. band, because I I feel like the movie obviously isn't gonna work. I didn't think it was gonna work before they started filming. I never think it's gonna work. Yep. No one sounds like Freddie Mercury. It's not gonna happen, but I'm here for a documentary about it. Another fun moment in this movie was when she's talking about her influences to get into rock and roll and, and whatever to yeah. begin with. And she's like, I went to go see Cabaret with my mom and Liza Minnelli. And I'm like, yes. And they put it on, I'm like, this And then is... it kind of all made sense. Then. It did. I was like, oh, like the look. And the vibe and the fuck you attitude and the like yes. theatricality of it all. And I was just like, yes. So yeah, I really liked the first hour and I think she's a fabulous bitch and I loved it. And then yeah. it was like a bit meandery and like what's really going on and what was really the point of this story. You didn't really pick a through line. They didn't make a through line. To tie it all together and be like, ah, that's the thesis. Yeah. So definitely watch, watch it, it, but it does fall apart at the end. Yeah. So, cheers to Sundance. We saw, I mean, Colette is the, the standout by far. By far. The, I mean, I loved it. Go see Colette. We're reviewing some Oscar nominated movies, so stay tuned for those. And we'll start doing See You Next Thursdays for drag, because All Stars is back. And I don't know, stay fabulous, guys. <laughs>